Senator Matthias Cormann is the Finance Minister and the Acting Special Minister of State and he joins me now. Thanks very much for coming in. Yeah. A friend of my daughter's, a 15-year-old boy, came out as gay last week to his parents and was kicked out of home. Now, whilst you and your colleagues are bickering in your party room, aren't you concerned about the message you send to young, vulnerable, gay and lesbian Australians that they don't deserve the same treatment as other Australians and that when they are older and they fall in love, they won't be treated as equals with heterosexuals? Now, Emma, this is an issue in which there is a diversity of sincerely held, strong views on both sides of the argument. And that is, of course, precisely why uh, the government, in the lead up to the last election, made a promise to the Australian people that they would have a say on whether or not uh, the definition of marriage in the Marriage Act should be changed, whether the law should be changed uh, to allow same-sex couples to marry. Uh, that is the commitment uh, that we took to the last election and that is the commitment that the Liberal Party party room today reaffirmed as the best way forward uh, to ensure that every Australian uh, who is on the electoral roll has an opportunity to have a say on whether or not the current definition should be changed. Gay and lesbians <coughs> don't want a plebiscite. Their friends and family don't want a plebiscite. And when the wider public are polled on the issue and discover that it's going to cost something in the order of $170 million and not be binding, they also don't want it. Isn't it about time you were straight with the Australian public and admitted that this is nothing more than a political fix? Well, I disagree. I mean, this is an absolute, genuine attempt to give all Australians the opportunity to have a say on whether or not the definition of marriage should be changed to allow same-sex couples to marry. But and with it, respect, the Parliament could just get on with doing the job. Well, the, the Parliament has considered this issue on several occasions and on each occasion has reconfirmed the current definition of marriage. And but we've moved, course, on, we've moved well, on a lot, well, lot well, since well, then, you and, would concede. And, and the, the government went to the last election with an unequivocal commitment to the Australian people. And the Senate that knocked it we, back. That we should, that should we be elected, we would give the Australian people a say on whether or not the definition of marriage should be changed. Now, our, pre our first preference, uh, which is reflected in the bill that we put to the Senate uh, last year, our first preference would be to do that by way of a uh, compulsory attendance uh, plebiscite. But if that uh, is again rejected for a second time by the Senate uh, this week or next, uh, then the government believes that we have a legal and constitutional way forward to keep faith with our commitment to give all Australians on the electoral roll a say on whether or not uh, the definition of marriage should be changed through a voluntary non-legislated postal uh, plebiscite. How does a postal plebiscite have any legitimacy at all? It was not what you took to the election. What you took to the election was a mandatory vote across the country. This is voluntary and non-binding and it's widely considered a bit of a farce. Even well, Malcolm Turnbull, when he himself was the head of the Republican movement, he called postal plebiscites an experiment in electoral science that flies in the face of Australian democratic values. It will disenfranchise the young, the poor, Indigenous and migrants. Well, actually, the commitment that we took to the last election would be, was to give all Australians a say through a plebiscite on whether or not the definition of marriage should be changed. It is true that after the election, uh, our preferred option was, of course, reflected in the bill that we put to the Parliament, and that, is, that was to have, that is, to have a compulsory attendance plebiscite. Now, that is still our preferred option, and those that have concerns about, uh, you know, obviously have those sorts of concerns about a postal plebiscite in the Senate, I would strongly encourage them to reconsider their position that they've adopted in November last year and to vote for the full compulsory attendance uh, plebiscite. So you're trying to bribe them a well, bit? Well, no. What we're trying to do is to keep... Either let us have well, our plebiscite well, no. or we'll make you have this well, dodgy version that no-one yeah, really wants. This is actually not about us. This is about the Australian people. We respect the fact that there is a diversity of sincerely held strong views on both sides of the argument in the Australian community. And the way that the government is proposing for this issue to be resolved uh, is through the democratic process, is through a plebiscite. Our first preference is to do it through a compulsory attendance plebiscite. Uh, if that is not successful, we believe that there is a legal and constitutional way forward the, as the next best option to keep faith with our commitment, to give the Australian people a say on whether or not the definition of marriage should be changed, and that is through a non-legislated voluntary postal plebiscite.
There were genuinely held strong views on euthanasia and abortion, <clears throat> but we didn't have plebiscites for that. Well, I mean, this issue has had a long history. The Parliament has dealt with it. Those issues well, also have well, had a long history. The, the Parliament has dealt with this on a number of occasions. So next it's time euthanasia occasion. comes up, will you put it to a plebiscite? Well, you know, obviously these judgments are made on a case-by-case -case basis. Is in this the new well, normal? Well, Emma, in relation to this issue, the, the position is this. The government made a firm commitment, a firm promise to the Australian people at the last election, and we keep our election promises. We will do everything we can as a government to keep faith with the commitments that we made to the Australian people, and the commitment we made was to give them a say on whether or not the definition of marriage should be changed. Why the sudden obsession with keeping election promises? Uh, well, you know, I leave that commentary to you. Uh, OK, is, well, you didn't do so when it came to health and education. If you were going to say it was a hallmark of your government, then that would be a little disingenuous. You didn't keep the promise when it came to health and education. No new taxes was what you said before the 2013 election and you introduced the 3% deficit repair tax. You promised no cuts to the ABC and took $44 million from us. Tony Abbott promised you wouldn't shut any Medicare locals. All of them are gone. Julie Bishop promised no cuts to foreign aid and that it would grow in line with inflation. Instead, it was frozen, which represents a $7.6 billion real cut. Then there was Tony Abbott's signature policy on paid parental leave, which has also been abandoned. Well, th this is a commitment... Why is well, this particular promise so important to keep? Well, I, I think th this is a commitment that the Turnbull government took to the last election, and I think you'll find that the Turnbull government has gone absolutely out of its way since the last election to deliver on all of the commitments that we uh, made to the Australian people. And, and you know, if we weren't able to get 100% of our commitment through, uh, to uh, deliver as much of our commitment as we possibly could, and that is what we're doing on this occasion. Can this issue be settled before Christmas? Uh, well, look, you know, it, our, our, the government has got a proposal uh, to uh, get this to a resolution, uh, to give the Australian people a say, and, uh, you know, sub if, if the outcome of that plebiscite uh, before uh, the end of the year is a positive outcome, if the Australian people, by majority vote through a plebiscite, uh, support changing uh, the law to allow same-sex couples uh, to marry, then we believe that we'll be able to deal with this uh, through the parliament. The government would facilitate the consideration of a private member's bill uh, to allow to change the law to allow same-sex couples to marry, and we believe that that uh, would pass through the parliament before the end of the year. But, I mean, that is obviously depending on, uh, you know, some factors that are not uh, within the government's control. If the postal plebiscite returns a no verdict, there'll be no vote in the parliament, correct? Uh, if the uh, Australian people uh, dis decide by through the plebiscite... Those who can be bothered putting well, in a well, form and you know, I, licking I, the stamp and well, sending it through the post. You know what, Emma? Any Australian who feels strongly about this, in favour or against, I'm sure will express their view and will take advantage of the opportunity to have their say. Uh, in the end, uh, the government will be guided uh, by the outcome. If uh, the vote is in favour, we will facilitate consideration of a private member's bill and that bill, we are very confident, will pass through the parliament. Would that if be Dean Smith's is, bill? Can I just clarify that? Well, Would that be well, Dean Smith's bill? Th that is a matter for the party room processes in due course. That is not uh, something for me to deal with today. But you said uh, a private member's bill, not necessarily well, Dean Smith's bill. Well, well what, what we are dealing with at the moment is precisely the same proposition that was in the plebiscite bill that went before the Senate last year. And that is the very simple question uh, for the Australian people to answer, and that is whether or not uh, they uh, would uh, uh, support changing the law uh, for same-sex uh, couples uh, to be able to marry. That, but just that is... clarify for us, if they say no in a postal plebiscite, no. notwithstanding the fact that some people might boycott, you might have a whole bunch of people that don't vote because they've changed address or for whatever reason people don't vote because it's not mandatory, so you, re you end up with a no vote. No. Does this mean, so that we can make it clear for our viewers, this means there won't be a vote in the floor of the parliament? I was trying to answer that question to you before, before you were interrupting me. Uh, so in that scenario where there is a no vote through the plebiscite, the government will not be facilitating uh, a consideration of a private member's bill to change the law to allow same-sex couples to marry. That is right. And just in terms of your reflection on voluntary voting, I mean, that, you know, overwhelmingly around the world, uh, most jurisdictions around the world, most democratic jurisdictions around the world have actually got voluntary voting. There's only about 20 or so countries. No-one's had a voluntary vote on same-sex there marriage. There is only about... The, well, there's only about 20... Well, I don't know that that's true, actually, but there's only about 20 countries we're the, the we're the only Australian democracy. We're the only English-speaking democracy in the world that hasn't about, passed same-sex marriage. There's only about 20 odd countries in the world where there's compulsory voting. Okay, so Warren Edge tonight said he reserves his right to present Dean Smith's private member.
members' bill should there be a no vote uh, verdict in, in the postal plebiscite. Will the Cabinet stand behind backbenchers who cross the floor to bring a procedural motion to bring on a vote in the House? Well, you know, I can only speak for the government and uh, Warren Ench, who is a valued uh, friend and colleague, uh, can speak for himself. I can speak for the government. The government's position is that we will facilitate consideration of a private member's bill uh, should there be a positive outcome in favour of change through the plebiscite process. We will not be facilitating uh, consideration of a private member's bill uh, if uh, the Australian people through the plebiscite uh, vote no. Uh, that is uh, the very simple proposition but you would, you would support backbenchers who might bring a motion to have it voted? Well, it's, it's, it's not a matter of me supporting backbenchers. Backbenchers have got, you know, obviously... The right to cross the ..certain liberties. Uh, the government's position is... The government's position is as I've outlined. It does seem a little uh, a bit of a double standard at play here that each MP gets to ignore the public vote when it comes to the floor of the parliament. So if they vote yes in the public, each of your parliamentarians still gets to vote no if that's what their conscience dictates. And yet we've heard that some MPs who have threatened to cross the floor over this issue and introduce a procedural motion in the House to bring on a vote have been threatened, have had their pre-selections threatened. There's a bit of a double standard at play here, isn't well, it? Well, I, I totally disagree with that uh, characterisation. I mean, you know, obviously uh, th there is a proposal uh, to change the law. Uh, the coalition was very clear in the lead-up to the last election. We would, that we would put that proposition to the Australian people before the Parliament uh, would again be asked to vote on this. That is what we're proposing to do. And should the Australian people express a view that they want the law changed, then the Parliament, I'm very confident, uh, will support that view. Matthias Coleman, always appreciate you coming in. Thank you.